There's no way I can do that. I can befriend anyone and I'm really good at this. These are all examples of beliefs. Our beliefs about ourselves mean a lot to us. They're the lenses that we see the world through and how we understand its inner workings. However, like anything, our beliefs may not always capture the full picture. In some ways, they can even hold us back. But with time and understanding, we can change how we think about things, which will help orient us onto a better path. In this video, we'll be looking at six of these beliefs that are holding you back. Number one, I'm only lovable if I am productive. We pride ourselves on what we can accomplish and how fast. Whether you pride yourself on knowing your fastest typing speed or have your calendar neatly organized for the next month, it feels great to know you're productive and it's a good thing. But what happens when you inevitably have an off day or perhaps you spend a little too much time indulging in a non-work activity? It's easy to feel guilty, disappointed, or ashamed of yourself for not getting as much done as you hoped. However, it's important to know that you matter even in your dark periods. We're all human and you cannot operate perfectly 100% of the time. We all need time to recharge and sometimes indulging in your favorite activities can give us a much needed break away from our work. This allows us to return so we can do our very best. In fact, according to the Mayo Clinic, putting an excessive amount of value and effort into work can lead to increased burnout. When you're burned out, it becomes difficult to do anything at all. So go ahead, enjoy a nice weekend. Think of your time off as time for you. Number two, I only deserve love if I'm useful. Many people have dreams of becoming a lawyer or doctor and that's great. A lot of us find purpose in a rewarding and challenging job. However, going into a career for the wrong reasons and with the wrong mindset can make this more of a nightmare than a success. You are still worthy of love no matter how much you contribute. As we mentioned earlier, the Mayo Clinic states that putting an excessive amount of value into your work can lead to burnout. When you're dealing with burnout, you can feel an excess in mental health symptoms that can make your day much harder than it needs to be. While it feels good to be useful, it's unrealistic to be such all of the time. Sometimes you need to put yourself first and balance the time you give to others with giving to yourself. Ultimately, you will benefit from this balance in the long term. An article from Invictus Psychological Services explains that focusing on what you could be and should be doing can lead to resentment when our expectations don't match our reality. They state that instead of looking at what you've done or have not done, focus on gratitude for what you have. That may include friendships, family, health, opportunities, a job, a beautiful sunset, a meal, etc. If you find this video relatable and helpful, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Now, moving on to the next point. Number three, everything has to be perfect or else I am a failure. We care a lot about doing a good job and looking good at it. After all, it's embarrassing when you mess up in front of people. While it's good to be critical of your work and think before you act, this can be detrimental if you go too far. Perfectionism is unachievable. And if you're constantly striving for this standard and cannot seem to reach it, you can feel like you failed yourself. This can make it hard to try for one of your biggest aspirations because you think you'll never make it. In a grim example, licensed clinical psychologist, Dr. Corey Wilkes, PsyD, asks you to think of yourself on the deathbed. He explains that the most common regret people have while on their deathbed is not living a life that is authentic to themselves. They think of all that they sacrificed and missed out on. Ultimately, even if you don't succeed at your goal, it's always worth a try so you aren't left wondering what could have been. Number four, I'm too old to learn. We live in a place where age holds a lot of value. There seems to be a right time to do something and a sell-by date to succeed at it. However, much of this is a social expectation and not something that is necessarily true. An article by the Scientific American discusses research on this topic. They explain that older adults, 50 plus, can benefit cognitively just as much as someone 30 plus years younger can. The article further discusses a bodybuilder who started in their late 50s, an innovative photographer at 98, and on a much smaller scale, how a couple in their 50s became professional beekeepers in two years. Much of what we know about aging and mental capacity is more related to maintaining it rather than natural loss. Think, if you don't use it, you lose it. The brain can be exercised at any age, 
and keeping it in use guarantees your longevity. So even if you're not in your 20s or 30s, it's never too late to pick up a skill that you always wanted to learn. Number five, I can't be alone. Being alone is difficult, but it's not something to be afraid of. Whether you're settling for less in a relationship or keeping in contact with a toxic relative, we do these things out of fear of not having them. However, being alone is not all that bad. Plus, while you may think that these situations are keeping you alone, there are many that will be at your side and can support you in small or big ways. An article from The Learning Mind explains how bonds with friends can in some cases override those you're related to. It's better to surround yourself with those who will uplift and support you rather than put you down. This extends to other forms of toxic relationships as well. It's best to do what works for you. And while that may be difficult, it can involve letting go of those who bring you down. And number six, it's all or nothing, black and white, either or. These types of dichotomous thinking can severely limit you in many ways. While it's easy to try to fit things in categories, you miss out on a lot of necessary nuances that help paint a broader picture of what can happen. Psych Central talks about how this type of thinking can severely inhibit what you do and make it easy to compare yourself to others. Fortunately, they give a few ways you can combat this type of all or nothing situation. One of them is building self-awareness of your thinking and asking the question, what else? Being aware of all the alternate possibilities can help you think about your situation in a more realistic way. Things are hardly as simple as they appear to be. So taking a dive into all the ways your situation can manifest into will help benefit you overall. We rely heavily on our beliefs, and this is a good thing. However, when our beliefs are actually holding us back, it may be time to evaluate all of your possibilities. Think about some of the ways that what you believe is true may be impending on your progress. Let us know some of these down in the comment section. Are you looking for a cuddly companion that brings positivity and mental wellness to your daily life? Get your very own Psy. The lovable plushie is here to brighten your days. It embodies the spirit of Psych2Go and it serves as a reminder to prioritize your mental well-being. Its green leaf symbolizes growth, renewal, and the importance of self-care. Whether it's for yourself or as a thoughtful gift for a loved one, Psy is ready to be your snuggly friend through all of life's ups and downs. Buy your Psy plushie today. Link is listed in the description box.